how often have we planned out the perfect day or decided to do something and how often does it actually go the way we plan? Never. First of all, if you've never heard of improv before, uh, you're missing out on a lot. It's taking a suggestion from the audience and making things up on the spot, um, which means you never know what it's going to be and it's all derived from a suggestion. What's a characteristic you really liked about your grandfather? Humble. <laughs> humble, yeah, we'll go with humble. The definition of improv, in my opinion, is the spontaneous stimuli that arrives through our mind, body, and spirit moment to moment. You have to improvise everyday life. You're saying yes to things, and you don't know you're saying yes to things. When you do a lot more improv, you get better at saying yes, and it makes you more likely to have spontaneous trips or for you to be less affected by things. We're afraid of looking funny and weird in front of our peers, and uh, we, most people just want to get along and just get by. Very few take risks. Very few are very creative with their risk taking. And so people tend to shy away from improvisation, thinking that they're not capable. When in reality, they've been rehearsing improv all their life. All of us improvise our whole life. It's also something that I think is in, in all of us. It's an innate ability to just let go, go with the unknown, allow yourself to be affected by anything and everything. Improv is comedy, but it's comedy because it's just seriously committing to something within the moment, and comedy comes from that. It comes from the tension on stage of people not knowing what they're doing, and laughter is promoted when improvisers break that tension. I think a lot of people have uh, many misconceptions about what improv actually is. Oh, you gotta be tremendously funny like uh, Eddie Murphy or Robin Williams, may you rest in peace. You have to be uh, very brave and willing to take over a room at a moment's notice and jump up and down and get everybody's attention. I think a lot of people come to think that improv is just one quick line jokes. Um, or Whose Line Is It Anyways, which is a great show, but only one facet of improv. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi! Uh, I think a lot of people relate it to what they've seen, which is generally comedy, comedy performances, Second City, um, Saturday Night Live. So Robert, what did you do today? Well, I woke up, I shaved off my eyebrows. Then for lunch, I went to Wegmans, I stole a chicken salad sandwich. Improv, in reality, has so many different levels and types and styles of it. And I think that it's sad that not everyone knows that there's this whole other branch. It's like assuming uh, basketball is the only sport. I think a lot of people shy away from improv, both actors and non-actors, because people are deathly afraid of letting go. People who are afraid of like public speaking fall into that kind of category. People who think, I, I can't do that, if those people are much funnier or much smarter than me, and they are afraid to take a, a, a risk. It's scary to get out on a stage, and so they're like, oh, putting myself out there? Terrifying. Whether that means an actor with a uh, paper telling them what to say, or a person with a schedule and a day planner. What happens if you take all that away and you have nothing planned? Then who are you? And what do you have to give? The reality is we have to get in touch with that part of ourselves if we have any chance in being anything. According to this law, you're not allowed to speak gibberish. You see, but that's in you. And not just you, in all of us, right? Like, let's get it right. What I want to say is let's get it true. I think we lose the tendency to play when we're adults because as we grow up there's more rules put up onto us in society. Like little kids, you're like, go run, play with your friends, make things. And then the script turns into do what's safe, do what's predictable, make money, don't take risks. And I think that domestication process really can be detrimental because we lose sight of the essence of our being, which is connected to our childlike self. So many of the best improvisers are five-year-old kids, and you'll never be as good as them because they don't care. They don't care how they're being perceived. Certainly it's important that we, as we get older, we put um, practices into play, but we also have to hold on to our child that just wants to jump in. And improv, is, in my opinion and in my searches, has been the most organic and quickest way to get back to the kid in the sandbox. You think you know what's gonna happen? Yep, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, remember that cliffhanger I left 
QR code. <laughs> if you had to nail it down what it takes to do improv, it's just showing up. It's showing up to a place and saying yes to the idea of putting yourself on stage and saying yes to the idea of being vulnerable. You learn to listen. You learn how to solve problems on your feet and it doesn't matter what industry you're in. You understand the nature of teamwork, when to step forward, when to step back, when to support, when to take risks. Improvisation is a, a lifelong skill that you use wherever you go. And it doesn't put pressure on yourself to do anything but just be. You know, which is really what everyone wants. Everyone just wants you to be yourself.